Okay, um, you're welcome. We are still on chapter four, uh, IGCSE Environmental Management. And in this section, we'll be looking at the syllabus content 4.9, uh, where we'll be looking at managing water, uh, managing pollution of fresh water. So um, the major syllabus content has to do with, uh, we should be able to describe and explain strategies for improving water quality and um, for environmental management we're expected to look at how to improve improve sanitation treatment of sewage and pollution control and legislation all help in managing pollution of fresh water so um, quickly improve sanitation it has to do with when you have to separate human excreta from contact with um, humans, uh, which is achieved by toilet and latrines. So waste can be removed by the connection to a system of sewage pipes or sewage ridge. Now, you find out that that collect human feces, urine, and waste water. So usually that's one major function of having a, a sewage pipe. Now, also connection to a septic system, which consists of an underground sealed settling tank. Uh, we have to he 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 separate the human excreta from contact with humans. Now, flush toilet, uh, which use a holding tank for flushing water and a water vessel that prevents smell. Then you have to, uh, a poor toilet has a water seal, but uses water poured by hand for flushing. Then we have a pit latrine, which is a type of toilet that collects human feces in a hole in the ground that is sometimes ventilated to take away smell. Then we have composting toilet, now which are dry toilet in which vegetable waste straws, grass, sawdust, and ash are added to the human waste to produce what is known as compost. That's why it's called composting toilet. Now, these are the four major types of toilet, and their major function here is to separate the human excreta from contact with humans. And uh, this is achieved by toilet and latrines, which can be removed by what we've just looked at. Now, these also help to improve um, kind of um, a way to prevent pollution of fresh water. Now, we have water treatment, um, which has to do with water is made portable by underground coagulation treatment. Now, being filtered and disinfected, water is made portable by underground coagulation treatment, um, being filtered and disinfected. Um, what is coagulation? That has to do with when particles in the water are stuck together and settled to the bottom of the container. Then filtration, when water is then filtered through sand and chlorination is adding chlorine to the water particles which help to kill pathogen and disinfect it to make it more portable for drinking and use by humans and other functions. Now, the last thing we're going to, okay, no, not the last one, still under water treatment. We, we, your syllabus is expected to look at sewage treatment, how the stages involved in treatment of sewage. Now, um, you find that, that first, there are different stages involved in the treatment of water using a sewage uh, treatment process. We have the primary, secondary, and tertiary stages. Now, you find out that first we have the screening, which take, which take place here, um, where large objects are removed from the waste using a coarse grid, just like this. So as the con uh, the coarse debris or screen as the water moves from the septic tank from um, the source 
as it comes in, you find out that this quartz debris will uh, help to filter the water to screen it in order that large particles will not be able to pass through into the next phase where sand and grit have been removed. Now, from there, you now move to the primary treatment, which is the first settling tank. Now, what happened here is solid organic matter, mainly human waste, settle at the bottom of the tank. Settle at the bottom of the tank. This is a coagulation still taking place, which is treated in a sludge digester. Now, you find that, that um, it settles at the bottom of the tank, and you have your sludge digester here that help in the treatment of this human excreta or human waste. So, you find that the clean water then overflow the side of the tank and is taken to the next stage. So it overflows the side of the tank and is taken to the next stage. Now the next stage will now be called the secondary treatment, all known as the oxidation stage. But first, uh, let me still explain something about the sludge digester. You find out that the sludge digester is oxygen-free condition are created that encourage the growth of bacteria, which can break down the sludge from the human excreta, releasing what is known as a methane gas that can be burnt. Treated sludge can be dried in sludge lagoon and used as organic fertilizers on farmland. So it is not totally a waste. It can also be, be used. Now the methane gas can be used for cooking, while the fertilizers that can be made from sludge can be used um, for agricultural process. Now, the secondary treatment or oxidation tank is when water is poured into a tank where oxygen is bubbled through it. So they add high amount of oxygen into the sludge, uh, uh, sorry, into the water that, uh, that moves in from the primary uh, clarification tank. Now, the, it is called an aeration chamber where lots of oxygen is added to the water, is bubbled through it. Now, this encourages the growth of bacteria and other microbes that will now help to break down organic matter that is found, that is still inside uh, the water. Now, from there, you find that, that uh, the water that has been aerated will now move into another settling tank, which is called the secondary treatment water settling tank. Now, the first settling tank is the primary treatment. The second settling tank is the secondary treatment, second settling tank. Now, what it does is, at this point, water enters where bacteria settle to the bottom, forming more sludge. So, settle to the bottom, forming more sludge. Now, the cleaner water overflows the side of the tank as effluent, usually discharged into river or it can also be stored and used for both domestic and um, agricultural and industrial process. Now you find out that the sludge that is formed here in the secondary settling tank still is connected to the sludge digester. So it still moves down to the sludge digester where uh, and the process of converting it to methane and uh, organic fertilizers will take place. Now, lastly here, you have the tertiary treatment. We are further flittering out of its effluent or its chlorination. At this point, you now add chlorine to it, which produces even cleaner effluent that protects the habitat in which it is. Now, these are the process involved in uh, uh, sewage water treatment. And I think it's very important to understand it and know what is happening at each phases. Because um, in, IGC, in, sorry, in IGCSE environmental management, you will uh, most times be given a, a diagram uh, that shows the primary, secondary, and tertiary section, and be expected to explain what is happening at each phases. So it's quite simple if you understand the individual uh, compartment of a sewage treatment system, 
you will now be able to say uh, what is taking place in each of them. Now, another way of controlling water pollution is pollution control and um, through legislation. Now, uh, this legislation puts pressure on polluters to find ways to reduce pollutants. Now, industries are required to monitor the pollution they cause and keep it within set level. Um, the next one we have here is the Binational Great Lake Water Quality Agreement, GLWQA. Now, Binational Great Lake Water Quality Agreement, which is a, uh, a loading limit of phosphorus was set at 11,000 metric ton uh, per year in response to eutrophication issues in the Great Lake of USA and Canada. Now, remember, um, eutrophication is caused when there is excess nutrient in water. You, you can watch the video on water pollution to understand the concept in detail where we explain eutrophication. Now, you find out that, that uh, because of this high amount of eutrophication in the Great Lake of USA, they came up with this law. This is under legislation. They came up with this law known as Binational Great Lake uh, Water Quality Agreement. Uh, more like a legislation, sorry. Now, what uh, they came up with is uh, they set up a limit uh, of 11,000 metric ton of phosphorus to produce per year in response to eutrophication issue in the Great Lake of USA and Canada. Now, you find that that fines for exceeding set limit. You'll be fined for exceeding set limit and companies may be prosecuted. In extreme cases, they can be forced to shut down if the limit is being exceeded. So, in our next video, we, we are going to be looking at uh, water and its environment. We'll look at managing water-related diseases. So, uh, thank you so much and see you in our next class. And I need you to subscribe so you'll be notified immediately the next